Connecting to MongoDB. In this video, we'll modify our app to make a database connection to MongoDB. We'll be using an object data model or ODM program called Mongoose. Now, using Mongoose, we'll be able to create schemas and models that will work flawlessly with MongoDB in an asynchronous environment. We'll also install another program called a NodeMon for monitoring changes in our code so we don't have to restart our server each time. Here is how you can install the drivers, very simple. Once we install that, we can go into the code and import it, create a connection, and create models and schemas for our program. So let's go and do that right now. All right, so here in the IDE, I'm going to go into the terminal and uh, do the installation. We'll do npm install. We'll do both the mongoose and MongoDB. This should be fairly quick, small module. OK, so we also want to install the other one, the uh, Nodemon. And this one going to make it global installation, so it will be available globally throughout the program. All right, so I'm going to go and open the back end pro folder here. And let me just close this for now. So we only want to modify the API. So go into here and let's create uh, maybe two folders. Uh, one for the uh, database, I just call it DB. And I have another one, I'm going to call this is the schemas. Now, our, our program is really small, so you may not need it, but I'm doing this as a, a for a practical reason. And the idea is you want to separate all your um, data in a separate uh, environment. So you have your controls here, your database here, your models, your routes and schemas, and so on. Okay, so first, let's just go into the database and make the connection. So I'm going to create a file. I'll just call the same name, db.js. Inside here, then we're going to import the mongoose. OK, so once we create that, then I'm going to go and create a URL. This is the, let me put a comment here, um, U, URL URI uh, for MongoDB. And uh, this would be your uh, I, the string mongodb <coughs> colon slash slash uh, localhost, or you can use the IP address. It's sometimes safer to use the IP address. Uh, port number 27017. And I'm going to assign the database right away. I know we haven't created it yet, but I'm going to create a, a database called uh, provider underscore db. Now, what this will do is once you make the connection, then it will create that database automatically if it's not there. Okay, If it's there, it will use it. If it's not, it will create one for you right behind the scene, which is pretty cool. So we got that done. And now we just have to make the connection. So I'm going to say mongoose.connect. As you can see, it takes the URL and option and a callback function because all these are done asynchronously. So the URL is this one here. And I'll come back to, do, to the other options for now. And you can use the callback function, or you can use the then function. Either one is fine. It returns a result, which is the connection itself. And then we'll uh, do a console log to show that uh, this is a successful connection, if it is, right? Success. And then we also maybe want to want to uh, log the result, see what that is. And if it's not the case, then we want to catch the error. And we also want to console log this to the console, so error, so we can see what those errors are, if there's any. OK, so that is our connection. Now, notice I did not assign this to a variable. You can if you want to. Since we're only making one connection, it's going to be assigned to the mongoose uh, connection. Then that's all you need. If you have uh, multiple connections you want to make, then you can set it to a variable, like a const and then you know, uh, con1 equals that and you have another connection you make another one and so forth okay so ours is just a single connection so we're good here now 
for testing purposes, I'm just going to export this out. But first, let me put a comment here. Uh, make say say connect to MongoDB. I put here asynchronous. This is asynchronous call. Actually, all of these uh, function calls are asynchronous. Okay, so I'm going to just basically export this out. So we can just test the connection, okay? So let's save this and open the app JS file, and I'm just do right here above the app, um, just just to test it. Well, we can do right below here. It doesn't really matter where, but um, right here it's fine. So I want to do a constant DB connection. I'm going to import that DB here inside the nope the D, the uh, DB or oh, API db and then db okay so uh, once we call that it should run and then we will have the information here in the console so let's save that and let me navigate over here and see what that we can make some changes so go to the terminal and now clear my console and we'll do our usual npm start <clears throat> so here we go we ran and we have some information back so if let me ex maximize this if I scroll up, you see all this information. This is the result that was returned by the connection. And here's our message here, the success message. But and then after that, we have the actual string from the result. It is a connection that gives all this information here. Somewhere down here, you see we have a name of our database called provider underscore DB. At this port number, this host, and so on. We didn't have a user and password here. If you have it, you want to supply those as well. The Mongo client. It's the uh, default client and our models. You don't have any yet. We're going to create one eventually. But for now, so it shows if you see this, that means we're good to go. Okay. Now, up here we have two warning messages. These are deprecation warning messages. That means that some of these code are out of date. Um, so we want to suppress those errors, uh, this warning. So what you can do is it gives you a instruction here, say to use this parser, put this option in the Mongo client connection. So we're going to basically copy this. And let me max minimize this again. Uh, you can put that here right next to the uh, URI, URI. It takes uh, another option here. And the this is the options here. Okay, so you can add that here. Um, the second warning is this use topology true here. Put that here as well. Put a comma and then put the next property there. So if you do that, and that should take care of that problem here. And then notice again, I have to, once I make the changes, I have to, you know, terminate my program and then install over again. And that's why I installed Nomon, right? So Nomon, a monitor, it will monitor that for us and then it will keep that active. So we already got the results back. If I scroll up, you see that the error messages just go away. We made that call right here. The messages uh, are gone and we have the success plus the result. Okay, if I make any changes in here, if I make some changes, say, if, let me go to the bottom here, say that I make a, a change in the code, uh, just a space, and if I go back and save, you see that it renders the whole thing and runs the whole app again. So I don't have to restart again. Okay, that's pretty nice. All right, so you can do that here. So we're good here for this part, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, result off. I don't want to see that uh, in the console every time. Success, we can leave it now. Later on, we can turn this off, but for now, we'll leave it as, as is for now. Okay, so next, let's go and create our schema. So um, schema, I'm going to have another file. I'll just call it uh, schemas as well. The schemas are um, the, the structure of our uh, documents. So we're going to follow the same uh, idea in the models folder. If you go into the models here, if you look in here, this is our schema, okay? Our the shape of our document. So I'm gonna just um, copy this, and uh, I can close this now. I paste it over here. For now, I'm gonna do something in there. So we want to uh, import the mongoose as well. So const mongoose require mongoose. Oops. Okay. And then here we're going to have a um, schema. Uh, we're going to define a schema, just an object. 
So constant schema. The reason why I put a capital letter is because it's a class and we're going to instantiate that schema. You can put that here. So I'm just basically reassigning this to the word schema. If otherwise, you have to use the whole word again each time. So it'll just make it a little bit shorter. Okay. So once we get that, then I'm going to make this schema. The schema is just like a data model, right? The model of if your of your um, model object. And so this is the whole uh, provider schema. So I'm going to make a variable here called, I can say, um, create um, provider schema. <clears throat> I'll put a comment here. This is the parent schema, and I'll, I'll um, show you why in a minute. So we're going to say constant a provider schema is equal to new schema. We call that schema func class, and then we're going to pass to it an object. Okay. So this object is this one right here. So all of these, we we'll put that inside that. Um, object like that. and then we need to change all of these to uh, um, types okay uh, as you can see it's already in JSON which is good we just have to change this to this will be of type um, we're gonna remove the ID all right so I'm gonna let uh, MongoDB manage ID for us so we're not gonna use the regular ID here anymore. we'll be using the underscore ID and since the IDs are not really that um, important or useful for us here, we're just going to let MongoDB manage that for us. So that means you can omit or disregard this ID field. It will be added automatically. It's like the primary key. Now for the first name, we want this to be of type string. Okay, you can put the string here as a type or uh, um, technically the correct way is to say type and then you put string like that. Okay, that means it has a, that takes a type of string, and it also take the type of string and so forth. If it's just one variable like this, then you can just say string, and you don't have to put the word type there. But uh, just be careful because the type is a keyword, and if you have like a variable here, type, you know what type of user is this? If you put something like that, then it's it's gonna think that this is the data type for whatever it was before. So be really careful when you do this. Okay, so um, and Let's say that you can also add validations in here. So it's a type string that is part of the uh, validation, right? You can say, I want this to be required. So if you say required is true, and then that's to be true. You can also set like minimum, maximum, the like min, and then like min has like two characters, and max will be 20 characters, like that. You can put all those there for validation purposes. Okay. So ours, I'm just going to say this is required, and it's a string. And let me copy this and uh, put it to this as well so that will be uh, required the position this will be optional so if it's just optional i'll just use the short hand notation for string okay the company name this is uh, maybe we'll make that as required and the uh, address yeah this is required i have too many commas here the address too is optional so we put string the city, yes, required, a state required. And here you could put, if it's just a state, you can put here the maximum. Like the minimum will be, uh, you know, two characters, the max will be two, right? So the maximum, it's the same. And then the zip code is required. Uh, I put here, well, you don't have to put max, men, but maybe like men will be at least five uh, digits. Uh, the type will be string, but I will put digits anyway, strings anyway. Uh, email will be, uh, phone will be optional. Uh, well, let's say we, we require that, at least one phone number. And then the email will be also required. And uh, the description could be optional. And so is the tagline. So we made those optional. At least the type of strings. Okay, so that is our provider schema. Now, the reason why I put a parent schema here is because as you can see, I mentioned in the other video, is that every time you see a pair of curly braces, that is a document. So here I have a sub document, or this is a child document. You can leave it as is for now, which is fine. But the best way to do is to break this out into its own schema. So you want to go up here and say, uh, create 
um, create the company schema. In here I'll put the embedded or I guess called the sub or child uh, document. And I have here called company schema and equals the new schema. And the reason why you do this is because of, you know, reusability, right? You want to reuse this again, maybe just in case you have to. So I'm going to copy this whole part and put it right in here. And then here in its place, I'm just going to replace that with the company schema. Okay, so now you, now I can reuse this. Now it's important that you, you take care of the order here. So because I'm using this right here, this schema has already been existed above. So I can't put this below down here or it won't work. Okay, so the order is important here. Okay, let's see if this works. So once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save that. And then I'm going to export these out to uh, wherever it's been used. So I'm going to have a module export. And I can export both of them as an object. And the reason I do object is because you have objects, you have access to each of these uh, properties, right? If you want to use them separately. Uh, if you can just say, you know, provide a schema, you can just do once. What if I want to reuse the other, uh, uh, you know, company? Or if I created more schemas, what I do, right? So you put to object, it's always uh, better that way. And you can access the whole, um, the whole uh, list. So I'm going to send both of them out. I mean, we not use it, but just for good practice. All right. So let's save that. And that is our schema. Um, so I think these, you don't have to be used like quotation marks, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. And so we're, we're done for this one. And then we're going to export these out or import them in to the model. So now we're gonna we're not gonna use this one. This is just a an, an object, right? We're gonna create another file here, and I'll call it um, not to confuse with the provider's model. I guess I'll just call it provider, okay? And it's already inside the model, so we'll, we'll I guess it's understood. So in here, we are going to do something similar. We're gonna import the mongoose require. Uh, goose and notice I did not import MongoDB at all because the mongoose has already used that and then here I also want to import the schema so const and the schema remember there are two of them right so I just want the provider schema and that is coming from the uh, models not the, uh, the schema schema and this is the reason why I said you want to pass as an object because I can pick and choose what to import, right? If you want to use both of them, they import both of them there. Uh, otherwise, you're good here. So then now I'm going to have a uh, provider. So I'm going to say create a, a provider um, a model. This is the model here. So I'm going to have a constant and um, I'm going to make this a capital letter just because it's a, it's a, um, it's a model. And I'll be going to the mongoose function called model. And then here you pass the name of the uh, collection. Okay. Ours, I'm going to call it providers. If you um, put it here, if there is no such collection, then just like the database, uh, MongoDB will create that for you automatically. Okay, so the first one is a string. We're going to call this provider. Now, uh, typically, you know, if you think about uh, table names or collection names, you can kind of debate this whether you want to make it plural or singular. Okay, so uh, for MongoDBs, uh, if you use Mongoose, the Mongoose will always uh, pluralize this for you. That means if you provide the name as provider and then in the uh, database, Mongoose will create a collection call with a lowercase p, all lowercase, and with the letter s to make it plural for you by default. Okay. If you provide providers, then it's going to keep that already because it has an s. Okay. So uh, it's difficult to put this provider here, and then you leave that to Mongoose, Mongoose to do for you. So that is the name of the collection. 
and then here is the schema. This is why we imported the schema here. So uh, you can also put all your schemas here in the same file, but again, I want to uh, separate all of those into, into their own uh, areas. So just import, export them out. So this is the provider schema you want to use for that uh, model. Okay. And then now we are good here. So after that, we want to now just export this out to somewhere else. So I want to export the provider here. Okay, you can also use the object if you want to. Again, why? Because again, I might use, you know, I might have up here, I want to use the company schema as well. And I might create another, you know, constant, maybe this is the company model. And I'll use a different, uh, you know, um, a different uh, collection, maybe company. And then I use that as well for the company schema. And I also want to export that out. So in the, in the same provider, well, usually you would call this like schemas, I mean, uh, uh, I guess models. But I can do both of them. And so it just makes more sense to use as an object instead of a singular um, provider. So I'll keep that as is. So I'm going to show you how, why, what I chose that way. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, mainly just a design uh, preference, but I would, I'll use it this way. So I'm not going to use that, it's going to turn this off. Uh, should you want to modify this app and make changes, changes, then that's the way to go. Okay, so I exported that out. And then now I am, I think I'm pretty much done here. And then finally, we're going to add, we're going to um, import this into the database. And we're going to re-export that. The reason why is because I want to call this DB and not the schema or the provider uh, um, file. Once I call the DB, then it's going to do the connection for me and also create the, the providers, everything for me in one go. Okay. So up here, I'm going to uh, import the uh, provider. So it's a, because um, I use object require, and then here will be coming from uh, the uh, the models and then the provider and then um, then I'm gonna export the provider out I no longer need the module um, the, the connection here okay because this again this one connection once you invoke this it's gonna make the connection and the connection will persist okay so I'm gonna turn this off uh, and we'll remove the export and instead of that I'm gonna export this model because this model now this provider is actually a model. If you want to call the provider model, it makes more sense to you. That's fine. Because all it is is now, once you call mongoose.model, this one, this object will allow you to make all the, uh, um, find all the credit operations through this object and not through this one, right? I mean, not, not through the connection, through this uh, model here. So I'm going to import it here. And then I make the connection, and then down here I want to export that out as well. So I'm going to export the provider. In this case, I'm just going to just use one. Okay. And um, so we're good here. And kind of show you what I, what I mean by this provider is. So once you make the connection down here, you can say you can do a a, a creation, right? So you can say provider. Well, let's see. We we know that we created. If the console we created the uh, database already it's it's been connected and although we don't have anything in the uh, compass you have to go to the compass to show you so over here you see that if you refresh it the database is not here because you don't have any data yet and there's no collection yet right uh, so when we run this app actually the collection is there it just there's no data okay so if i go in here in the terminal let me open another tab here and let me just go into mongoose, I mean mongo shell. And down here I'll say uh, db show dbs. You see it's not there, but our database is called provider db. Okay, and we already created in our provider a provider called providers uh, uh, collection. So if I switch that over to the provider db, you see that that's been switched over. And let me clear this. So DB is provider DB. If I do a show collections, um, 
here. Let me just type that. Let me see if I did. Or do we call this? Oh, yeah, we didn't we didn't invoke this yet. Uh, let's see. Or did we? Yeah, I, yeah, I did the DB um, from here to the DB here, which I exported the provider. Uh, so yeah, it should be there. Let me see. Uh, I it shows that there. Um, Yeah, it's not there. Maybe maybe because there's no data in there. I'm just going to go and, and see if it has some data in there, okay? So let's just say that here, I'm going to go into, uh, go and write this simple function called create, and I'm going to create a just an empty uh, uh, object or data in there. I save that and make sure it ran already. So it has some error. It says successful here, but I do have some errors in here. So maybe that's why. Um, provider validation. Uh, last things required. Oh yeah, because I, I did not follow my, I did not follow my um, my my schema right. I need to. It says a uh, failed validation. My provider last name, first name, and are required. So it it does work. It is there. It, otherwise, you you will not see this. Okay, and uh, we haven't created any uh, data yet, but it's in there already. So that's good. So to to test this, I can go back to the providers uh, list. And we'll just copy one of these guys, okay? We'll copy uh, the first one. Oh, without the ID, I'm going to copy this. And I'll paste it into the uh, code here, just for simplicity's sake. Put it in here and remove this. I don't need the ID and that part here. I also don't need the extra um, curlies down here either. So this is my schema, right? I'm going to match this. And let me save this and let's see if that works. So down here at the bottom, you can see that it's successfully added. I can now go to Mongo Compass to see if it's there. Let me refresh that. So you can see we have our provider DB, our provider's collection, and we added one um, data here. Okay, so that is working nicely, and we are good to go here. And this is the end of this section. Now that we have successfully connected to MongoDB in the next section, we will configure and update our APIs to interact with MongoDB.